There are very few places in this world that haven't been touched by invasive species. They're on our lands and they're in our waters. Almost nothing looks like it did 100 years ago. So one of the natural questions we ask here at the Smithsonian Environmental Research Center is where did they all come from and how did they get here? Invasive species aren't anything new. Species have been crossing into new territory for as long as life has existed on Earth. But today it's happening on a much larger, faster scale than we've ever seen before. And much of it is because we as humans are able to move faster than before. Plants and animals have been moving around the globe for centuries and centuries, primarily with, with humans. And once they get there, then they test the new environment, and sometimes they do well, and sometimes they don't do very well. The ones that do very well, we usually end up calling them invasive species. These invaders end up supplanting native species and altering natural ecosystem processes. There are roughly 180 invasive species in the Chesapeake Bay today. They come from Europe, Asia, just about every continent except Antarctica. There are dozens of different ways they can arrive, but one of the biggest is through commercial shipping. There are two main ways invaders cross the ocean in cargo ships. The first way is to latch on to the outside of ship hulls. What happens is that these organisms will attach to, for example, the bottom of a container ship, and that container ship moves from port to port. So whenever it moves, it brings with it that diverse group of organisms. So what we do is we put out these plastic panels. So this is just a piece of PVC that we attach to a brick for weight. We put them out for three months, approximately three feet down in the water, and wait for growth to happen. We cut the plate off and bring the entire thing back to the lab and analyze it under a microscope. And then from there, we identify it and determine whether it's native or non-native. There's a second, more subtle way that invasive species can arrive here on our shores. Some of them arrive in the ballast water tanks on big ships, like the one you see here. Ballast water in its complete essence is nothing but weight. And a boat needs weight down low in order to stay stable, uh, not tip over in big waves. The ballast water is taken in ports and harbors around the world. And the waters in ports and harbors tend to be filled with all kinds of little animals and plants. And when it's taken up in the ballast water of a ship, and the ship goes somewhere else and releases the ballast water, it also releases the little plants and animals who are now in a whole new playground with all new neighbors. And sometimes they play well, sometimes they don't. So this can create economic and ecological issues. So a major challenge we have is to learn how to treat ballast water on board because we've had a number of aquatic species actually come here in the ballast water of ships. So in order to test methods for treating ballast water to make it safe for the release of the ballast water without the potentially invasive species, we've outfitted this uh, humongous barge with a ship's ballast water system, including pumps and tanks. We apply techniques to the water, including ultraviolet light, a bit of chlorine perhaps, passage through a large metal sieve with small holes to trap the little animals, things of that nature. My challenge is essentially uh, to help provide data that can inform the decision makers and regulators as to which methods of making the ballast water safe are effective and which are not effective. We've had a number of aquatic species come through cargo ships, but there are a few land invaders that have crossed that way as well. One of the most successful invaders is an invasive breed called Phragmites, a species that crossed centuries ago in dry ballast. So what we see here is a really beautiful native marsh, one of many on the coasts of the Chesapeake Bay area. And these native marshes are slowly being taken over by walls of this regress here, Phragmites australis. Phragmites is a great invader because it takes all of the substrate, all of the ground, and it creates this massive block so that there's no sunlight or available space for the native species to come back up. I mean, as you can see, we have walls of frag all over the Chesapeake Bay area. 
but it's not entirely commercial shipping that causes the problem. For example, invasive species can cross through in things as commonplace as packing material. So in this forest, we have a lot of plants that aren't native, such as wineberry, multiflora rose, and microstegium. It's a non-native plant that came to the U.S. in the early 20th century through packing material. It was used to wrap porcelain on its long trip from China. And it's an annual plant, so this is growth. All of this is actually from one year. The microstegium stems form this dense, thick mat, and it really makes it difficult for native seeds and native plants to come up through it. The live stems shade out anything beneath and really keep them from taking back the forest. But not all invasives are accidents. Sometimes, humans deliberately bring a new species into the environment without considering the consequences it will have for the rest of the ecosystem. For example, in the 1870s, managers intentionally deposited carp from Europe and Asia into a Baltimore pond. The purpose was to create a fish hatchery. However, carp prey on native fish eggs and muddy the water, making it very difficult for the other animals in the environment to survive. Today, scientists are doing their best to monitor them. Carp, 460. Ecologists have learned the hard way that once an invasive species takes root, it's very, very hard to get out. Once something has become established, trying to get rid of it is next to impossible. And so the lesson in this is we need to be really cautious in moving things around the earth because there will be consequences and the best we can do is to minimize those consequences by not moving things where they ought not to be.